Hello internet, and welcome to another Bobcat in a Box. I have many, many packages to open today. I think I counted 16, so I'm a bit overdue for a video, right? <laughs> uh, and for those who are not familiar with Bobcat in a Box, it is a shopping, air quote, robot. Um, you give it a budget and you send some money over um, and then you set some keywords and it goes through all the different shopping sites to try to find really cheap things <laughs> to buy with your money. Uh, then it ships it to you and um, one of the things I like to do for these videos is see where everything came from and kind of uh, decide if it was worth getting. Most of these things are shipped overseas. Um, they come a long way. <laughs> and I'd say probably 80% of the time it's just, it's, it's close to junk. <laughs> I thought about, uh, canceling it. And I think about canceling it like every month. And then, I don't know, I keep it. <laughs> Something about it is oddly compelling. That and it gives me a non-food thing to make a video over. So that's always a bonus, right? So first up, we have a package from China. And it is marked as an educational toy in the um, customs declaration. And the US value is supposed to be one whole dollar. And it looks like we got a knockoff a Disney, a Mickey Mouse more specifically, a Lego set here. So that's a little uh, figurine that you could put together and it looks like it would fit into uh, Legos. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's not officially licensed um, and you know oddly enough uh, the robot was sending me lots of Lego stuff especially a few months ago and I told it no Legos but I think because this is um, um, basically it's a knockoff right so it's not name brand so I have to think of like another thing Another keyword to say not to send. Um, on top of setting what you want, like I think I have frogs, unicorns, craft supplies, um, that sort of thing as my positive keywords. So things that it will give me, you can set negative keywords such as Legos. <laughs> and it's supposed to not send you the things that match those keywords. Um, but uh, either the uh, Chinese websites that it's buying these things from are sneaky or the robot, uh, you know, just doesn't have the, the wherewithal to understand that I really, really don't want Lego stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next up, I kind of cut off the tag here. Uh, this is from Solomon Island. So not China, that's kind of exciting. Everything's so overwhelmingly Chinese that I like to see other countries represented. Uh, and it says alloy jewelry, value 50 cents. And it is a little unicorn pin. Um, pin collecting is a big deal for some people. Uh, not anybody I directly know but, at least, <laughs> uh, it is within my keywords, because I know unicorn was one of my keywords. So, we'll try to find a use for that little guy. Next up, we have Block Toy from China. Block Toy leads me to think that... Uh, going to be another Lego knockoff here. Let's hope not. Uh, but 
what it is. <laughs> this one looks like a witch uh, that you can put together. Um, maybe block toy. Block toy might be my new uh, anti keyword, if you will. Although I have to say, it's kind of hard to see, especially with all the writing on the packaging. But that little witch face in there is a uh, pretty well done for a little tiny plastic toy. Um, they even added a little boil to it, so that's fun. I can appreciate the attention to detail, even if it's something that I didn't quite want. You'll notice that a lot of these are in the little tiny uh, bubble mailers here, right? Um, and that's because my the the budget that I give the robot is only nineteen dollars, and I told it to try to get me like ten things for nineteen dollars, and it mostly succeeds, but that does mean that it's like really 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 low end stuff, and I don't have enough confidence in the program to increase the budget. I mean, I've been thinking about getting rid of it, right? Um, Plus, right now, I'm not working, so uh, increasing the budget's just not an option <laughs> to get more fancy things. But uh, moving along, this has come from Thailand, and the description is a cake mold. And that, oh my goodness, is just the cutest little silicone mold of a frog. Um, and silicone molds are actually very useful. Um, I can use them for a variety of things and they also, um, I have a friend who does resin craft, right? Uh, so she could also use this. Although that's a pretty adorable little frog. I don't know if I want to give it up. <laughs> of course, my, uh, my resin dried out. I found that the hard way when I went to go do a craft project. So I'm going to need more resin if I'm to use the cute little frog. So far, that's definitely the winner, but we have lots and lots of packages to go. Next up, this is from Zem Zambai. There we go. I think it's Zambai. It could be Zambia. I'm not very good with foreign country names. And the description says that it's silk rose flowers. And they value it at a whopping 25 cents. They're getting the fancy stuff now. And it's not even flowers. <laughs> uh, it looks like some leaves that you could add to your, to your uh, fake flower arrangement. And there we go. A whole bunch of, it almost feels like foam. They said silk, but I have a hard time believing that's silk. That's definitely foam. <laughs> Uh, I don't quite know what I would use that for, um, but maybe I'll find a purpose for that guy. Uh, I do have a wedding coming up, although this wouldn't be enough to decorate much of anything, right? <laughs> Hopefully the wedding's still on. We're due to get married in October, so fingers crossed that by then... Uh, I'm actually allowed to have a wedding. My uh, poor cousin, uh, he had to cancel his wedding. And I just, I felt for him and for his, his bride, his wife. Uh, because it's a lot of work, right? To put together a wedding and to have it like stolen from you basically. And the final moments, because uh, their wedding was very early in the uh, social distancing quarantine uh, situation. Moving on though, we have a product from Solomon Island. 
is also alloy jewelry alloy um valued at 50 cents and it looks like we got another enamel pin uh, this one is a scorpion design with some uh, black enamel in there uh, it is well done for what it is but I'm not a big pin person maybe um, Bobcat is going to force me to start a collection <laughs> Um, next up, we have something from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, the customs declaration says that this is ribbons, and it's valued at 40 cents. So that's a bit unique. A lot of times they'll go for even amounts, you know, a dollar, half a dollar. Um, and I find that the values are pretty arbitrary. <laughs> They, uh, they don't want to value it too high because then they have to pay taxes on it, duties, right? So let's see what 40 cents worth of ribbon looks like. Oh my goodness. The, they had to do two labels and that makes this package actually heavier than the little itty bitty ribbon that I got inside. Now granted, this is actually a pretty cute ribbon. I'm sure I'll find a use for that at some point. You know, put it on a present or maybe make a hair accessory. Uh, so it is a nice ribbon, although there isn't very much of it. <laughs> Makes you wonder, cause you know, this uh, shopping robot, it buys from regular shopping sites. It's not like it has a 50 cent junk bin that it just pulls from, right? So I have to wonder who out there, other than my shopping robot, <laughs> is buying, you know, what I think is a maybe two and a half, three feet worth of ribbon. Like, why go through all that effort to order it? Uh, you know, I suppose if you're looking for something very special, but I would think that you'd need to order more than than that. <laughs> All right, next up, this says that it is cake tools, and it is from Cambodia. So we have lots of countries represented today. And considering that they said it's cake tools, I'm gonna bet it's another silicone mold. Uh, that is one of my positive keywords since it's a common product for the uh, robot to buy and apparently they're cheap to make. <laughs> yep, it is indeed another silicone mold, although this one looks significantly less useful. Um, it's just some sort of like decorative element. Uh, maybe it's an arrowhead or a carrot. It could be a fancy carrot. <laughs> um, so that one is much less useful than the frog. You know, if you're going to have random molds kicking around, they might as well be recognizable things, right? <laughs> Next up, we have a very shiny package. They don't normally come in uh, foil like this. Uh, this is also from Kyrgyzstan and the customs declaration says that this is a bead and the US value is 30 cents this time. So we're starting to go down in value. <laughs> oh wow. Um, well, I don't think anybody would pay 30 cents for that. Uh, it is one lonely bedazzled lobster claw for like, um, jewelry making. So it is useful. Um, I do use lobster claws occasionally. Um, and my friend also, uh, the other resin artist could probably use it as well. Sometimes I 
give her some of this stuff as a present. <laughs> uh, but the fact that there's only one of them, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the short ribbon situation, right? Like, who's out there ordering one single uh, little metal piece, you know? Uh, if you're someone who makes jewelry, I would imagine you would need more than one of those. Maybe they uh, just all <laughs> uh, are making these listings for Bobcat in a Box. Next up, we've got Kyrgyzstan represented again. Uh, and this time, the description on the package is technology mold. I wonder what a technology mold would be. Uh, and the U.S. value is $1.00. So this is, this is expensive. <laughs> High quality stuff I'm opening right here. And, you know, I'm not sure what on earth you would use that for. It looks like um, the pieces to make an umbrella, like a little tin umbrella. Um... And I don't, yeah, I don't know in what bit of technology you need a little, uh, maybe that's just stiff plastic? I can't tell. Yeah, it might just be plastic coated. But anyways, um, I, I really have no idea what you would use that for. And I'm a pretty crafty person. I usually can find a use for a lot of things, but there must be some specific purpose that I'm just not aware of. Next up, we've got something from China, and it is a mold, and this one is also valued at a whopping dollar. So, let's find out. Ooh, so this is, in fact, another resin mold, or a silicone mold, rather, that you can use for resin. And it has, like, a daisy pattern in there. And the detail on it is actually pretty good. Um, there would definitely be some use for that, I think. This would be a good one. I think to give to my friend who is the resin artist because that's about the size that she normally works in. Uh, she's not really a flower person, but you can't hurt uh, to make a few, right? Um, she usually uh, goes with me to many of the craft shows that I was doing uh, and hope to do again uh, once we can all start seeing each other again, right? And she predominantly does, like, individual charms, usually out of resin. Uh, and then she kind of has the offer that she'll turn the charm into, you know, either a necklace or a key ring or, you know, um, there's a couple of different options. Most of them are jewelry related, right? Because she puts a little eye pin in there uh, so it can be hung. So anyways, because that's her main um, shtick, right, for the craft shows, I like to support it. Um, unlike me, she doesn't do it uh, as a job. She just does it as a hobby, but she does come around and help me uh, watch the table. So that's worthwhile. Anyways, we're just going to keep moving along here. We still got a few packages to go. I hear some people rustling outside. This is from the Solomon Island. It's valued at 68 cents. <laughs> Someone plugged that one into an actual calculator. Uh, and the description is cutting die. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if cutting is literal or not, but it is a pair of scissors. And it's made in the same way 
that the umbrella was. And now I'm wondering, because it said cutting die, and usually they're not specific enough to be like, this is a, a scissors, right? They would usually do like a broad category, like, you know, mold or block or whatever. So that leads me to believe that this, this and the umbrella from before, they look very similar are intended um, for a paper cutting machine. Uh, I remember some of my school teachers used to have die cutters, um, you know, and it kind of works like almost, it's like a press, right? And you push it down on the paper and it cuts out um, the shape for you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to guess that these are for one of those machines. So at least I understand now what the purpose is, but I'm definitely going to have to add that to a negative key list, keyword list, because I don't have one of those die cut machines. I have a nice fancy um, rotary cutter, actually, that I use for a lot of my arts and crafts. And those are nice because you don't need, you know, individual dies for every object that you might want to cut out you just tell the computer you know cut me out a heart and bam you got a heart <laughs> uh so yeah moving on next up we have a package from zambai and the description on this one is ice bag valued at 60 cents Hmm. I will have to look up what that is precisely because there's, there looks like there's some kind of powder in there, right? I'm guessing it's a like put together your own ice pack. Like maybe you fill it with water and somehow seal it and then suddenly you have like um i bet those little powder bits um turn into a gel and become an ice pack i'm gonna have to assume that's what this is i've never had a uh <laughs> make your own ice pack um, and the instructions are definitely not in English, uh, Chinese, if I were to guess. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to find out how to use those, but ice packs are usually helpful. Um, sometimes I take a lunch on the go, right? And my last ice pack actually kind of... Uh, bit the big one and finally popped a little hole in it. So I do need another one. I just don't know how I would put that together. I'm sure there's instructions somewhere online. Now next up, this one actually has some heft to it, uh, which is surprising for these packages. This comes from Thailand. And it says sticker decals. And normally stickers aren't heavy. So this has definitely got my curiosity uh, peaked. Ah, okay. So it's not actually stickers. You may recognize these from, um, uh, whatchamacallit, my last video. <laughs> Uh, these are little nail um, design makers. Uh, it's a little metal plate. And it's probably really hard to see on camera, but it's embossed very, very finely, right? And the idea is that you put your nail polish on it and you kind of like squeegee it so there's only nail polish um, in the parts that are cut out 
Um, and then there's a special tool. It's kind of like a little rubber ball that you use to lift up that um, nail polish and then you can deposit it onto your nails. Um, when I was younger, I actually uh, bought a kit for doing this and it does work. Unfortunately, I've lost the little special tool and I tried to use like a rubber thing I have here at the house uh, to test out the other one that I got before. And uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work. I'm guessing like a stress ball might. Maybe I'll add stress ball to my keyword list and see if I get one. But um, that aside, I suppose I'll use them at some point, maybe, if I get the thing. But what's interesting here is that I have two different designs, but three of the same one. I really don't know. That probably wasn't intentional. I can't imagine why you would order a pack that had three of the same design and one of a different design. Maybe two of each, but not, you know, it's oddly proportioned. But they are very thin, right? So I could see someone intending to pick one up and maybe grabbing uh, two. But I don't know. That's an interesting uh, mistake there. Maybe I'll have to go find some nail artists and just give them. <laughs> oh man. See, this is, this is, you know, a lot of stuff that I don't know what to do with, right? But it's still, it's fun. It's entertaining. Um, I just wish that I didn't feel so bad about all the waste that it creates. You know, if it's an object that I don't want, not only is it a piece of plastic or metal that now isn't getting used for something more useful, um, but you know, it also has to get shipped all the way across the ocean. Um, and it just seems a little wasteful. I, I feel bad sometimes that I keep this subscription. Next up, we've got another package from Kyrgyzstan. That seems to be our main country, this, uh, this particular video. And it is described as alloy jewelry for 50 cents. So, yep. It is yet another um, enamel pin. It's kind of got like, it's a weird design. I'll, I'll let you guys see it here on the camera. It looks like maybe someone wearing a bone chicken mask. Like there's elements of a real face. Like I can see there's an ear and a chin. But then there's, I would say plague doctor, except for it doesn't have like the typical um, nostrils at the end and it has on the back of the head like a comb like a chicken's comb uh, but they the way they designed it it almost looks like when you inflate a glove like a medical glove um, you know and make a turkey out of it or something uh, that's an odd pen pin uh, I'm sure someone out there wants that thing but uh, it's not me <laughs> <laughs> and we are down to our last two packages so we will finish this up shortly uh, this is a fondant mold probably another one of those silicone molds uh, and the value is one dollar and this came from Kyrgyzstan as well it looks like I didn't cut quite deeply enough here into this bag. So let's go ahead and cut it again. There we go. And oh, it is indeed a silicone mold. Uh, and this one has numbers on it. Uh, that would definitely be useful. Uh, they had labeled it for fondant, right? And you can use these for 
fondant, chocolates, resin, you know, depending on what you need. Although once you use it for one purpose, you really shouldn't use it for other ones. Uh, nothing like getting a little bit of leftover resin residue uh, in your chocolate, right? But I was, once upon a time, a cake decorator. And having something like this would have actually have been really nifty. It's a little on the small side, so it'd probably only be good for like little tiny cakes. But being able to make little fondant or chocolate uh, numbers would definitely have come in handy. My old boss, uh, currently she's out of work too, right? And they've closed all the the major resorts in the area and that's where we were decorating and, and making pastries in um but when she goes back to work maybe i'll contact her and see if she wants that one because i could use it and i think my friend could use it but it would probably be even more useful for her we are on to our last package already uh, it is also labeled a cake tool, so we're going to get another mold. The question is, is it a useful mold or a strange one? And that could be useful. Let me turn it towards the camera here. It is a little castle, like maybe sand castle -y. It's kind of got a a bumpy texture, like an intentionally bumpy texture. Um, so it's just a little, you know, fairy palace there because it's so tiny. Um, it might be a little on the large side for my friend who does the resin jewelry, uh, which is funny because it's a little on the small side to use on cakes. <laughs> um, but that probably will come in handy at some point. I think that overall this set of packages was not bad. It wasn't great, but it really wasn't bad either. And we got, so it looks like a, a half an hour of entertainment out of it, so eh, maybe not quite worth it. <laughs> I don't know if there'll be another one. There probably will be another Bobcat in a Box video uh, from me. So just a little bit of housekeeping uh, before I get to the shout outs, because we are at the end of the video and I do like to shout out to a couple of, our, of my commenters, right? Um, but first up, I did get a complaint about my video being too quiet. And I do know that I tend to record a little softer um, than many videos do. Uh, part of that is um, the apartment. Um, if I put the gain way up, you'd just be able to hear so many like rustling and wind and footprints and uh, dogs barking off in other units. Um, so I do have the gain down. I turned it up slightly for this video. Um, but other than that, uh, really the only way I could make it louder is to artificially increase the volume, which would create some static and lower the sound quality. So I'm not sure if the person who complained is like just uh, an outlier or maybe isn't used to how softly spoken ASMR tends to be, right? Or if the videos are just too hard for people to listen to. Um, it's a rare complaint, so I'm, I'm gonna think that the videos are okay, but if you guys are having problems hearing me, um, I could try to speak louder, you know, less ASMR-y, or I could put up the gain more. Um, we'll just get lots of interference. Um, or I could even artificially increase the volume. They're all things I don't quite want to do because they'll change the quality of the sound. Um, and I think just making it louder 
at the sacrifice of the quality isn't the best move. Um, but I'm curious, uh, as to what most of you guys feel like, and I'll, I'll, I'll follow, um, your advice, kind of. <laughs> if there's a majority of people who think I'm too quiet, then we'll figure something out, right? Um, but on a positive note, I have reached over 250 subscribers. Um, I think it was like 263 at the time that I made this video, which is just phenomenal, right? <laughs> And now I have so many subscribers that either my spam filter is kicking in or YouTube just doesn't send me all of the comments uh, to my email. Uh, so I apologize on how behind I am on the comments. <laughs> um, I'll try to get on that here real quick because um, I just didn't realize that I was still getting so many of them. I have gotten goodness. Let's see, I have, looks like, eight or so to reply to um, over the past week. Um, so that's just phenomenal, you guys. Like, uh, that, that is like the best kind of complaint I can have is that I can't keep up on comments. I could <laughs> if I was on YouTube more often. Um, but I actually, I don't spend a lot of time um, on YouTube. Now my fiance, he does, um, but he queues up the videos on his own account, so I don't see all of my notifications, right? Um, so I'm going to have to get a little bit better at that. Uh, I try, I try to stay away from too much um, television, video, all of that. Um, I figure just, just because I'm stuck at home all day doesn't mean I should turn into a total couch potato. Only a little bit. <laughs> so I guess the, the moral of the story here is thank you for commenting. I will see them eventually and reply to them here soon. Um, I really appreciate it. And that being said, let's go ahead and do a couple of shout outs. Uh, definitely can't shout out to everybody, but uh, we'll get a few names in there. So shout out to Non Non and Naomi. Um, Apple Tree, ASMR Fiend, or some of my like long standing uh, commenters. Um, them new guys is also, um, they always have something fun to say. Thank you also to Evelyn Lopez and Jamie Whitehead and Lori Rudolph. Uh, those are just a few that I've gotten since my last uh, video so thank you everybody I hope you're staying safe and sane during this crazy time in the world um, and I'll see you in a few weeks for my grocery haul until then I hope you have a wonderful night nighty night